Um, Christopher Fulton, page 269. Hi, welcome. Mayor Leanne, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to present my submission. A couple of years ago, my youngest son fell down a stormwater drain in New Brighton. The irony was he was helping remove a wooden crate, which we erroneously thought vandals had left, but it was actually a makeshift cover for the drain. I reported this immediately to the City Council, however, it took two days before anything was done. I believe this is an indication of the neglect that the then City Council projected towards our suburb. If we forward on two years later, Paul Zanon delivers an excellent speech to the City Council, which only four members attend. We're a community of passionate people who have been through a lot of adversity in the last four years, and we need the support of the City Council. The last City Council sadly consisted of cowboys, in my opinion, but believe we have good people on the current City Council. Of course, I understand your hands are tied, not necessarily by wiser, higher powers, but we need our councillors to show some real guts. The reality is that much of the council's budget has been allocated to other districts than it has to New Brighton, to areas of smaller populations, but with larger per capita allocations. Moreover, the payment from the QE2 has gone to other parts of the city, and I agree with Mr Zanin when he calls this asset stripping. If I want to take my kids to a pool, I have the choice of travelling several, several kilometres north or south to do so. I think this is unacceptable. New Brighton needs a pool, like the saltwater pool, which was promised but hasn't yet come to fruition. The great people of this area have achieved so much over the last year. The coast to coast, the rockabilly ball, the sand competition, to name but a few. All of this has been driven by a passion and a concern for the area. We're well aware of the little paint jobs and the fix up the crack in the small driveway in the lesser affected areas of the city and of the disdain held by small minded people towards our beautiful home. We really don't care about this. We're a great community living on a gorgeous coastline. We have so much to offer, not just the city of Christchurch, but to overseas visitors also. We've got plans and dreams that will make this area the jewel in the crown of this city, but we need the support of the city council every step of the way with every citizen behind us. Cynical disregard and narrow-minded snobbery have got no place here. I'm not the only resident of New Brighton who's calling out to all who live in this city to support us and urge the city council to work with us. We can build something Christchurch will be truly proud of and will last for generations to come. And God knows we need that now more than ever. So I came here today to ask the City Council to support New Brighton, get involved with us and work with us. It might be the best thing you ever do. Thank you for listening to my submission. So I think that there's um, unanimous support for that um, around the table. Uh, Glenn, then Yanni. Thank, thank you very much. Um, for your submission, Christopher. Um, when Richard Usher said he wanted to bring the coast to coast finish line to New Brighton, we had a conversation and he said New Brighton will now become part of the coast to coast story. And I said yes, from the independent side of the west coast to the independent Republic of New Brighton. And we both laughed and what do you know, it becomes a Facebook page. Anyway, I, I think reading through all these submissions, there's a clear recognition that this is actually a jewel in the crown which is undiscovered. And that, is that what you're saying to us today? That's exactly what I'm saying, yes. Yeah. Yanni. Thank you. Um, thank you for your submission and you know, apologies for the councillors who were doing, we were actually doing a long-term plan presentation so we couldn't be there. Um, so, but we did pass on our apologies and unfortunately things do get double booked from time to time. But 
it wasn't because we weren't interested. And um, I mean, I just speak for Paul and my, myself on that point. But we've heard through the week, you know, in particular, I, I, I recall the tram deputation saying just spend more money and get the tram doing a figure eight in the central city. And as I've heard people come and talk from New Brighton about, or from those eastern suburbs, the, the poor quality of the roads, how, how, you know, the increased costs for, for cars and, and transport and the lack of access and the need for a connection, I wonder whether we should be thinking about something like the tram going from the central city out to New Brighton again, whether that would be something that would try and help, I guess, just provide that greater sense of connection and deal with some of those alternative transport issues. We've also heard that <coughs> things like the buses no longer service certain mm. communities out there. So yeah, I, just I, think, I think that's a that. very good point. Um, if you've actually tried to get out to New Brighton at this present moment in time, Pages Road is one way. Dyer's Road is dire to try and get onto <laughs> because <laughs> at rush hour it's almost impossible, which leaves Wainoni Road, which I've ironically titled the highway to hell because you're stuck in traffic. So where does that leave you, New mm. Brighton Road? So I think that's a very good point. I'm really not sure about light rail. I think why not put that out there to the community, see what they've got to say about it, see what support we've got for it, see if we can run with it. Yep. Any other questions? <clears throat> OK, look, thank you very much, and thank you for thank your you, passion, as usual. Thank you very much. Thank you.